Psalm 139. O Lord, thou hast searched me out and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts long before. Thou art about my path and about my bed, and spiest out all my ways. For lo, there is not a word in my tongue, but thou, O Lord, knowest it altogether. Thou hast fashioned me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful and excellent for me. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go then from thy spirit? Or whither shall I go then from thy presence? If I climb up into heaven, thou art there. If I go down into hell, thou art there also. If I take the wings of the morning and remain in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there also shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, peradventure, the darkness shall cover me, then shall my night be turned to day. Here the darkness is no darkness with thee, but the night is as clear as the day. The darkness and light to thee are both alike. For my reins are thine, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks unto thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My bones are not hid from thee, though I be made secretly and fashioned beneath the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect, and in thy book were all my members written, which day by day were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How dear are thy counsels unto me, O God! Oh, how great is the sum of them! If I tell them, they are more in number than the sand. When I wake up, I am present with thee. Try me, O God, and seek the ground of my heart. Prove me, and examine my thoughts. Look well if there be any way of wickedness in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Today's meditation is on the piece of stone in front of us, the remnants, I assume, of the Grindleton font. The parish of Grindleton has an interesting history because there has been a Christian presence here for much longer than the church building you can see behind me. A small chapel is said to have existed in the boundaries of this parish, but records are vague. The psalm I have taken for today's meditation is clear enough as to why it should be associated with fonts. The promise that God knows us so deeply and has known us since the very moment of our birth is present in the opening words of Psalm 139. The font we see here is also something that is known, and yet its place and its purpose is uncertain. The font inside church a much more conventional shape and size, although clearly part of the later Victorian additions to the earlier rectangular original chapel. Yet even the great Austin Paley architects could not rid the church of this Regency piece of sculpture. Too precious, I wonder, in so many people's memories for it to be abandoned entirely. It lies, maybe, in the midpoint between usage and abandonment. Clearly not in regular use, I am not aware of who would be the very last person to be baptised into it. I'm also not certain if it was even the font at all, but its shape and construction leads me to believe that it can be little else. It is a poignant object, something serving little purpose, perhaps except to the birds who wash in it in warmer times. Yet this Lent, it seems to hold for me something so important. Our psalm promising that God guards and protects us and loves us wherever and whoever we are. At first glance, this piece of stone would be of little value, the sort of thing that you perhaps may see in the yard of an antique centre, looking for a new home, maybe just in someone's garden. Yet it's not in such a place. It is here, at the entrance to the church, where once it maybe stood inside. If it is the old font, someone has cared enough to keep it here, a reminder to us of our baptism as we enter the church building. It may not serve its original purpose. It may not be what it once was, but it was still known and loved enough to be here in the first place. So many people 
have gone through loss during the last year. For some it has been huge and deeply painful, but for others loss has been less, but loss all the same. We have known a time like no other. Perhaps we don't wish to be reminded of it, our every waking moment taken up with graphs and figures in a time of fear and uncertainty. But as I look at this particular object and listen again to the words of the psalm, it cannot but inspire hope. Many have given so much in the service of others at this time, symbolised perhaps by the new font inside church, often decorated so beautifully for festivals and used on the occasions of celebration at the arrival of a new birth. Its usefulness self-evident and its function part of worship and celebration. But maybe for others of us the usefulness is not as clear. Maybe we stand outside, our purpose uncertain, our role unclear, our status diminished to something not quite so beautiful to those around us, the stone which the builders rejected. Yet not rejected enough, not cast aside entirely, a place still here, maybe not as significant as other objects, but here nevertheless. It's an object somewhat immovable too. I would not wish to attempt to lift it, and even if I did, I would imagine I wouldn't get very far, if at all. It's despite everything here and still standing. As we hear again the promise of the words of the psalm, that we are known, known from the very beginning of our existence, and so precious to God that wherever we try and hide, God will still find us. We are never abandoned, never given up on, fearfully and wonderfully made. Our substance may indeed be imperfect. We may feel we are made in secret, but we are made and we are loved and cherished deep within the heart of God. May we be led indeed in the way everlasting. Almighty God, who see us that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.